Hello all, welcome to R&D Labs with me Rohan and today we are going to see how to add sign in with Apple option to your Swift project. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe to the channel and help us be part of your journey to learn Swift. So let's get started. So in this tutorial, as we know, we are going to enable sign in with Apple ID option. So there are two ways to enable this capability for your app. The first way is using your Xcode that we are going to see in this tutorial. And the second way is using your Apple developer account where you can edit your app ID configuration in certificates, identifiers and profiles section. So as I mentioned earlier, there are two ways to do it. Uh, the best way, what I would suggest is doing it through Xcode where Xcode manages the related entitlements so that you don't need to edit the entitlements file or app ID directly. Whereas if you do this using the Apple developer account, then you need to add the entitlements to enable the capability for your app. So within Xcode, go into your targets, open up signing and capabilities section and add the capability. Let us find uh, sign in with Apple. Yes. So double click it. So once it is done, you can see sign in with Apple capability already enabled for your app. So once you do that, you'll notice that the sign in with apple.entitlement file is added to your project. So let's go into viewcontroller.swift class. And over there, we will have to import authentication services. So once you have imported the authentication services module within your viewcontroller.swift class, next we are going to add AS authorization Apple ID button, which is the sign in with Apple ID button within your project. So we're going to create a function and we're going to add this button programmatically. So let's write function and we will name this function as add button. And we are going to create a button by the name Apple button as AS authorization Apple ID button. All right. Next, we are going to add the target to this button. So let's say Apple button dot add target. And over here, we are going to give it self We'll specify the request function, uh, say selector, and we will give a name. Um, currently, we don't have it written, so we we'll just name it as a button request. And we will give the event as touch up inside, and that's it. So once you've done this, let us position the button within your view controller. So uh, let's say apple button dot frame is equal to cg rect and let's set a position for it which is roughly around 81 by 329 and i'll give a width of 234 and a height of 30. so once this is done we will add this to our view so let's say self dot view dot add sub view and we will add the apple button to it okay now let's add the function that we have called as button request so let's call it as opj c function and we have named this as button request r is capital button request and now let's create a variable of AS authorization Apple ID provider. In this function, we are going to handle the Apple ID request. And first up, what we are going to do is we are going to declare a constant by the type AS authorization Apple ID provider. So let's name a constant as app provider. And the type is AS authorization. Authorization. Apple ID provider yes so once you do this next is we are going to set the request let's write request is equal to app provider dot create request 
after you do this, we are going to define the scope of the request, which are full name and email. So let's say request dot requested scope. And actually, if you see, there are only two scope available. One is email and full name. So we're going to use both. So I'll write full name and then I will write email. All right. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this request to a AS authorization controller and I'm going to define a constant by the name let auth controller as AS authorization controller and I'm going to set the request within it which is request okay so once you have done this oh uh, yeah you need to add square brackets Yes, and the error is gone now. So once you're done, you have to set the delegate. So let's say auth controller dot delegate is equal to self. We might expect an error here because we haven't confirmed this class to AS authorization controller delegate. So let's fix it automatically. And this error is gone. And let's say auth controller dot perform request. And that's it. So what you have done up till now is we have written a function which will be called when the user clicks in to sign in with Apple ID option and it will request Apple to sign in with Apple ID. So what will happen after a successful sign in? So for this we will have to add another function which is authorization controller with an AS authorization controller delegate. So let's write function and, and authorization and we'll have to choose did complete with authorization option which is the first one here. And so in this block, what we're going to do is we are going to grab the full name, the email ID, and the user identifier of the user who's trying to log in with Apple ID. So let's first create a variable of AS authorization Apple ID credential. So let's write a condition first. If let app ID is equal to authorization dot credential so let's first check that as AS authorization Apple ID credential. Once you have done this, we'll open up a block and over here we'll create three constants. So let's write let uh, user identifier as app ID dot user. So let's comment this as user identifier and this you can use it within your application to identify a user. Next, we will add another constant to store the full name. Let's write as equal to app ID dot full name. And this is the full name of the user. Next, we will add another constant to store the email ID. Sorry. Okay, so this is the email ID. Of the user next what we're going to do is in order to test our functionality we are just going to print this let's write print uh, user ID let's give it user ID and we are going to give it sorry okay and that's it Next, we are going to add the full name. Let's write full name. And sorry, here also we will give the colon so that it's uniform. We'll give it full name. And we will give this as email. Okay, so once you have done, uh, there is one more step that you can follow, which is calling the authorization controller did complete with error function. This is to handle the error that might occur during this implementation. So I have will, so I will not write a blog. I'll just show you how it has been done. So let's write author, authorization controller did complete with error. So here you can just simply handle your error. You can do whatever you want to within this block. So let's fix this warning for full name and email ID. 
uh, and the email id next step what we are going to do is we are going to check the current user status guys this is very important step because users can choose stop using your apple id with their app or simply sign out of the device so it is required that we check the user's conformity or permission for using apple id for your app so where do you add this usually i will recommend this to be added within view did load method but for the sake of this tutorial what i'm going to do is i'm going to add it within authorization controller did complete with authorization block so how do you identify or check the current user's credential it is by calling the get credential state for user id completion method so let's begin adding that so let's write let apple provider we'll create a constant by the type as authorization apple id provider which is this one and say apple provider dot get credential state and over here we are going to pass the user identifier which is user id and we're going to specify credential state and error and within this we are going to write a switch statement and we are going to have three cases for that the first case is authorized which means apple id credentials are valid and permitted to be used by the user second which is revoked that means apple id credential is been revoked by the user the third one is not found which means user is not found and the user has never signed in using apple id so in this case what you're going to do is for the not found cases you will have to show the sign in ui again to the user so let's begin adding a switch statement here let's switch credential state and we're going to specify the first case which is authorized which means uh, that apple id credentials are valid or you can simply say user has authorized to continue using your app using apple id okay next what we're going to do is write a break statement let's write case uh, dot revoke and sorry and we're going to write user has revoked access to your app using apple id okay let's write break here the last case that we're going to write here is not found which means user is not found so let's write user is not found or user has never signed in using apple id all right let's give a break statement there and a default which is break that's it let's build this and see yes the build has succeeded now after adding all this code all you got to do now is just to call add button within view did load method so that our button gets loaded within the view controller so let's go and add it let's build and see that's it so in order to run the sign in with apple id on a simulator you need to first sign in with your apple id within the simulator account so over here what i've got is my apple id and i have to key in my password for that i'll have to sign in all right then let's go ahead and run this on a simulator and see what we have there it is we can see that sign in with apple button is added to the view controller let's go ahead and click it so apple comes up with this information 
on what it does with your Apple ID. So let's go ahead and click continue. And over here, I've got an option to either share my email ID or hide my email ID. So let's go ahead and share my email ID. And I've got an option to choose from which email ID I need to share for this app. And uh, I'll just select the first one and I will just select the first one and click continue with password. I will key in my password now and click continue. Let's go ahead and see what we have. Yes, uh, this is the error or the message that I was expecting that is user is not found or user has never signed in using Apple ID. This is a message that you will always get when you try to use sign in with Apple ID using simulator. If you run this project using a real device, you will be able to see a different credential state. So let's go ahead and run this project using a real device. So I've connected my iPhone 6s to my Mac and uh, I'm running this application on it. So. So as you can see, the sign in with Apple button is visible on my iPhone. So let's go ahead and tap it. So it brings up the sheet where Apple requests whether I need to share my email ID or not or hide my email ID. It brings up my name as well. And uh, all that I've got to do is just to authorize this with my touch ID and I do it right now. Let's keep an eye on the output window. Once it is done, it's authorized. I have a breakpoint set up over here. I'll just run this. Great. As you can see, the email ID is visible. The full name is also available and the user ID that you can store in your application. So what will happen if you try to run this application again within your iPhone? So let's go ahead and stop this and run this application again. So I'll stop the debugger and I run this application again. Let's keep an eye on the output window. So I tap on sign in with Apple button. And right now it doesn't show up the sheet where it requests from me whether I had to share my email ID or not. It just simply requests me to authorize this particular application with my touch ID. So I'll just go ahead and do that. And let's keep an eye on the output window. There you go. So over here, as you have seen, you just get the user ID on every subsequent API calls. Uh, the full name is nil, the email is nil. So what you will have to do is you will have to store the email ID and the full name somewhere in your application or in a keychain as Apple recommends. And also you can use the user ID within your app. Though the credentials are valid, but you can only see the user ID and not the full name and the email. This is an expected behavior as per Apple. And what they have written in their documentation is because the user information isn't shared with your app in any subsequent API calls, your app should store it locally immediately after receive it from the API response. So that means if any subsequent calls to sign in with Apple is made, the full name and the email will be nil and you will only get the user ID in subsequent API calls. So this is how you add sign in with Apple option to your Swift project. If you have any doubts, please reach me out in the comment section. Please like and subscribe to the channel and see you until next time. Cheers.